Trowski here with Dental Health Tutoring. I have been a dental professional for 20 years now. Let me talk to you about how to survive your first year, first semester of dental assisting school. So how to really survive it, how to thrive, how to be inspired, and really what to expect, okay? So your first semester, let's start there. You're going to be overwhelmed. I remember my first day of dental assisting school. I was super excited, you know, pumped because this is my like dream career. I wanted to work in a dental office. I was so pumped. And if you've watched any of my older videos, you've heard me mention this story before but they were handing out a binder no word of a lie like this thick right they were just like handing out binders and I thought we were supposed to like pass it along or like take out certain pages from the binder um, and that's what I started to do I was passing it to like other students because um, I was actually at the front and I just happened to be on the side where like everything came to me first and the teacher's like no no um, Andrea that's for you actually I don't think she knew my name yet because we had like just started but she's like no Andrea or whoever <laughs> that's for you and I'm like what do you mean <laughs> she's like this is your binder for this class and I'm like pardon like oh my god it was so thick and that was all of our notes, everything. Everything was on paper back then because I've been doing this for 20 years. So I'm a dental hygienist now, but everything was on paper back then. So we had all of the notes for that class. And you can imagine, I was like, oh my God, I was still excited, but you can imagine my overwhelm. So if you've started your program yet or you're going to, I'm just letting you know, get it done now you're going to be overwhelmed, you're going to be stressed, but I can help you through that, okay? And why does all of this happen? Because think back in high school or any other college program, you learn topics over time, you are tested on it maybe a couple months later, you have time to study, but in dental assisting school, you literally learn something, like let's just say you're going to learn how to place the rubber dam on patients, and then you're expected to do it the next day, maybe two days later, but not months later, you're expected to do it right away. You'll usually be doing it on a mannequin first, but then a day later, you're on your student partner. And then next semester, you're doing it on real live people, real live patients that you don't know or that you do know, but you're going to be nervous because it's one thing to do it on a mannequin. You're not really nervous, right? But then a student partner, you're nervous because you don't want to hurt them. You're like new at this, but at least you know your student partner, they're feeling the same. They're nervous too. They're excited. They're overwhelmed. But then to work on a real live person, not that your student partner isn't a real live person, but it's different. Oh my goodness, it's very stressful. So you're in this constant state of, oh, I'm excited, but you're learning so much and then you're stressed and then you might not get good marks. That's another thing that I would like to bring up. In dental assisting school, depending on what school you go to, you're going to be expected to get 70% or higher in all of your classes. A pass isn't just 50% anymore. It's 70% or higher. I went to a private college where a pass was 70%, but in some classes you had to get 80%. And this was preclinicals and clinicals. But if you think about it, that's kind of good. You wouldn't want to see a dental assistant who barely passed, right? You wouldn't want to see... A dental assistant who you know again barely passed or barely knew their stuff or just memorized school and that's it you want a really good dental assistant look at all of those dental assistants out there they love their job you can tell they love their job they're very very smart that's going to be you one day so your first year your first semester you'll expect a huge workload expect to get very high marks in all of your classes but you also need to remember this you're likely going to have three quizzes one week and then the same week you're going to have two projects due maybe an assignment due maybe a group project due and this is all combined the week after that oh wait you have two final exams you have two other projects due. You have to study for five classes because then you also have exams the next week. So it's a lot of stuff. You're going to need to learn how to manage your time. People ask me all the time, like, Andrea, what agenda should I use? What or organizing system? And I tell people it really depends on you. Do you prefer to do things on paper? Do you prefer to do things online or digital? Um, there's things like Notion out there, which I like to use. It's, it's, it's like a digital organizing tool. So you're going to need to be organized. So, and that's because you need to manage your assignments, tests, projects, all of that. I have a course, the Dental Health Student Academy, where I help students 
with all of that. So I help manage your schedule. If you need tutoring help, I am right here for you. If you have a project coming up, you don't really understand it. I'm here to help with that too. But let's say you don't have your own personal tutor. You need to manage your time, right? So what I suggest doing is take your full semester. Yep, your full semester per class. Write down when you have quizzes, exams, projects, because your teachers will usually tell you this ahead of time. Write down everything and then manage your time. Let's say you have two exams next week. Start studying for those exams now. You know, I tell students even study two weeks before if you have that much notice because you're going to study really hard for those topics for three days, an hour each topic. That's what I suggest for three days. And then you'll notice that you're starting to retain the information. And then you might only have to study 30 minutes per topic, but you're learning more each time and you're starting to retain the information by a day or two before you take that test, you'll feel really confident confident and you'll get a great mark. Okay. What I also want you guys to remember though, speaking of marks is you can't get a hundred percent in every class. If you fail a class, don't worry about it. But what I want you to do is talk to your instructor and say, how can I make this class up? I failed. I want to do better. Do I write another exam? Do I do another assignment? What can I do to make that up? Cause you cannot expect to get a hundred percent in all of your classes. I can't do 100% fully if I was teaching 20 different classes, right? Like I couldn't do a very good job as a teacher. As a student, you can't expect to get 100% in all of your classes because guess what? You have a life too. You have family commitments. Maybe you have a part-time job or it's just simply hard to get 100% in all of those classes. So just remember to ask for help when you need it. Another thing that I like to bring up is be consistent, but consistency doesn't mean you have to get 100% all the time. It just means be consistent. If you're able to manage in your schedule to study two hours every day, but then let's say you get sick and you take three days off, that's okay. But maybe the next week study a little more, a little bit harder, but always be consistent. You don't have to be consistent 100% of the time. So when you get sick, don't beat yourself up. Or if you have a wedding to go to or some other commitment that you can't study as much as you want to that day, or you just want to take a break because you're human and you need a break. Don't beat yourself up if you're not 100% consistent all the time. That's not what consistency means. Consistency just means you're consistent. So if you take two days off, one week and then three days off the next week and then maybe just one day off the week after that you're consistently studying right you're allowed to take time off but you're being consistent with your studying if you take the whole week off and you decide to just stop studying for your tests assignments you're not handing in projects well you're not being very consistent right so consistency does help another thing that i that i want you guys to keep in mind is don't be so hard on yourself. If you get bad marks, if you don't do well on a project, if you get stressed thinking, oh my goodness, I'm so overwhelmed. This is impossible. I hate this. Don't beat yourself up. You're allowed to have feelings. You're allowed to have emotions. You're allowed to have a tough time in school. I did, but we all come out stronger and we're a better dental assistant and we appreciate those times because school's hard. And then once you get out into the real world, you're like, huh, I made it and I did it. Always keep that end goal in mind. Why are you in dental assisting school? Because you want to pass and be a dental assistant, right? You want your dream career. Keep that end goal in mind. So during your hard days, you don't give up because you have that end goal in mind. You know what you're working towards. School isn't, isn't forever, but you have to be there. You have to show up. You paid for it or somebody paid for it don't waste that time. Okay. Learn as much as you can retain that information and you're good to go. Now, what about a cozy study spot? Okay. This is so important. How do you pass your classes? How do you pass your classes in order to be a dental assistant and have your dream career? Well, you have to pass your classes, right? You have to study. There's no other way to pass than to study. How do you study? Create a cozy spot for yourself in order to do that. If you have clutter everywhere, you're trying to study in the kitchen when people are coming in and out all, all of the time, you need your own private space to really study, to open up the books, to open up your notes, set timers, wear cozy pajamas, cozy slippers, maybe listen to like a, 
a calming study ambient music on like YouTube. I have students that like to put their headphones in and just like listen to something calming. They like to light their favorite candle and they start studying. They look forward to studying in a way because that's the only time that they light their favorite candle. That's the only time that maybe they're eating popcorn at the same time. They're wearing their coziest pajamas. Make it cozy for yourself to study. You will retain the information better. You'll be focused. And I hate to say it, you guys, but put away your cell phone, okay? Put it on focus mode. Only allow emergency calls because things happen, right? Heaven forbid. Or just put your phone in another room. You don't need Instagram. You don't need Facebook. You don't need YouTube, you know? Put it on focus mode. If I had my phone on constantly and I was constantly answer answering emails, text message, this, that. Oh my goodness, I would get nothing done. There would be no tutoring courses. There would be no YouTube videos. I get so many messages. I even get some people kind of angry at me when it takes me a couple hours to respond to them. I check my, my emails in the morning, like 8 a.m. and then usually 3 p.m. and then that's it. So if somebody emails me 4 p.m., I might not get it. I do try to check my emails, like if I'm expecting an email from somebody or from a student where I did send them something and I needed to know whatever, but I'm not constantly checking my, e my emails or social media. If I was, I wouldn't get anything done. So you need to do the same thing. Put your phone away, put it all away, study, create that study space, get an organized schedule. You can do this. Keep that end goal in mind. Your first semester, even your first year is going to be the hardest because you're learning all of these new things, having to do everything all at once. Your second year, your second semester, depending on how long your course is, is going to be so much better because you're more used to it. You know how to manage your time. You figured out your study schedule and everything you learn in first semester builds on to the second and then the third. You're not always learning new things. You're building towards other things. And then by your last semester, you'll be amazed at, oh, remember the first day of school when I didn't understand the tooth numbers or I didn't understand radiography. Oh my gosh, it's so easy now. Like this is a piece of cake. That's going to be you. So look forward to that because you deserve it. And if you need any help, I'm always here. If you have questions, let me know. But I hope this inspired you. If you're having a hard time in school or you're about to start your program, I hope I didn't scare you. But for those of you in school, you're probably nodding your head right now like, oh, I get it. Or she gets it. She gets me. It will get better. I've been there. I've done that. It will be worth it. Just maybe a couple things you have to set up for success for yourself. A cozy study spot. Manage your schedule. Get it all done. Don't be too hard on yourself and take breaks. Okay. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.